And this. And this. Hello, Aunt Natalie, Ross. Hello, Kathy. Hello. What's going on? Oh, it's another lane landslide. Everything comes downstairs, but nothing goes back up. Why am I stuck with it? Ross, you have got to learn to take things back up to your room, dear. You make us all look like messy livers. Messy livers? Sounds like a new dish. <laughs> okay, but what about Patty? She's the real living room litter. Oh, bird. I'm ready to pull her over to the curb the minute she comes down the stairs. Is this enough? I'll need an escort to get me back to my home field. <laughs> Kathy, I ran into one of your school teachers today, Miss McClintock. Huh? And she tells me she thinks you ought to be voted student of the year. Oh. And she thinks you will. That would be wonderful. Well, you deserve it. Thank you, Aunt Natalie. We're all very proud of you. <laughs> I'm not. Now, what's that supposed to mean? She's setting a bad family example. Now I'll be expected to be student of the year. You make it tough on a poor little kid who just wants to remain a normal dog. Come on, Ross. I'll be your fighter escort and get you back home. Come on, what a short Santa Claus. Laugh all you can. You're next. Mm. Oh, Patty. Yeah? Oh, uh, Mama, I can't take them up now. Richard is coming to pick me up. You know, you're improving, Patty. I am? Hmm. You're thinking up excuses before I ask you to do something. Oh. Here, this just sort of floated down from your room. Oh, Mom, Richard really is coming to pick me up. I called first. You see? Honey, at least you can take the sun lamp up now. Oh, Mom, I like it that you see I use it to dry my hair while I'm on the telephone. And besides, it looks very nice there, like a regular lamp. If this were a barber shop, it might look like a regular lamp. Oh, honey, you can take these things up while you're standing here arguing about it. Mom, oh, please, I have got to get to the shake shop to study. At the shake shop? Yeah, Rich and I always study at the shake shop. You wouldn't want me to flunk shake shop, would you? I'm ready, Richard! Hi, Rich. What kept you so long? Oh, my mother had a lot of things for me to do. Come on. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who's lit most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog breaks her loose control. What a wild duet. Still their cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. The habits we form when we're young are very important. You know something? I can't figure out how my case got to the Supreme Court so fast. I didn't even know I was on trial. You're not on trial, darling. It's just that whenever your mother and I ask you to do something, we get evasion instead of action. We're wondering if it's the same at school. Hey, I feel like I picked up the plague. Well, you have. The put-it-off plague. Happily, there's a simple solution. Tell me I'm simple. I wish I had said that. All right. You take that same wonderfully wild energy that you spend evading things, and you redirect it to doing things. Let me give you an example. There's a copy boy down at the paper who's on his way up. You know why? Because every time someone asks him to do something, he says, can do, no problem, no sweat. Now, that boy is going places. You get what I mean? Yeah. You'd rather have a can-do copy boy than a no-can-do daughter. Patty, think about this. The point is, Patty, that the boy's attitude is refreshing and inspiring to everyone. Now, instead of taking a negative attitude, the secret is to say yes to life. You see? Without even realizing it, your cousin Kathy does. What do I do, Aunt Natalie? Say yes to life. I do? Yeah. Without even realizing it. You're serious, aren't you, Papa? You bet I am. Okay. 
Instant transformation. Can do, Patty. Good for you, darling. Now then, since this has turned into a family meeting... What meeting? The one you're in. Go ahead. My women's club meets here Thursday, and I would like some help making the coffee cake. Can do. Good meeting. It's not over. And I would appreciate some help polishing the silver. No problem. Great meeting. <laughs> and the patio needs attention. Ross, I said the patio needs attention. No sweat. Oh, uh, Patty, it's all right if the copy boy uses that expression, but... Uh... Oh, okay, Papa. No perspiration. <laughs> Laugh it up, Kathy, we're off the hook. Oh. <laughs> you know something? I feel better already. Patty, you're a wonderful girl to make an about face like this. It was nothing. Oh, there's Richard. See ya. Bye. Bye, slave. Hi, Rich. Hi, Patty. You ready to heel and toe it to the water hole? Yeah. I presume that means you're walking to the shake shop. Oh, hi, Mr. Lane. It must be great to have a father who speaks English. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, you know, you often remind me of a young Great Dane, but just what are you doing? Well, I have to decide what to order Patty at the Shake Shop. I don't understand. Well, haven't you noticed? Your daughter's been wearing fruit-flavored perfume. Fruit-flavored <laughs> perfume? It's the latest thing, Papa. It wouldn't do to order a cherry picker free flight flip if she's wearing wild grape. Oh, no, of course not. And the scents would definitely clash. So I have to determine here. Because the shake shop, everything smells the same. Orange. Tangerine. Can't you take her word for it? Sure. But it wouldn't be as much fun. Good night, Richard. <sighs> Teenagers. I wish I'd been one. <laughs> well, there's no denying you came to the right person for help. Oh? Yeah, our daughter's all straightened out. She's volunteered to help you with the cake, polish the silver, manicure the patio. She certainly did. Yes, indeed. And left without doing anything. As your advisor, I have called this meeting to select a new treasurer. Arthur, as you know, has enlisted. Of course, if anybody would like to volunteer... Can do. You, Patty? You really want to volunteer for this job? No problem. Well, unfortunately, Arthur was a little bit behind in his dues collections and postings, billings, banking. Well, Arthur was effective on the football field, but as a financier... You sure you want to volunteer for this job? No perspiration. No. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McClendon. Oh, Excuse me. Yeah. Here you go, Rich. Excuse me, Patty, but that was you that volunteered just a minute ago, wasn't it? Certainly was. You volunteered for drudgery? That's right. The secret is to say yes to life, Alice. Do it sometime. Makes you feel good inside. Come on. Well, I don't know how soon she'll be back, Richard. She's a student representative on the Borough Beautiful Committee, you know. Volunteered. I know. She also volunteered to organize our Shake It or Leave It Club. Shake It or Leave It Club? I'm afraid to ask what that is. Well, it's a dance club, Mr. Lane. We're going to hold our meetings at the Shake Shop. Hello, Richard. Where's Patty? My club woman will be here Thursday. The coffee cake isn't made. The silverware hasn't been polished, and the weeds in the patio are feeling very secure. Well, she's probably pacing herself. She's taking on too much. Yeah, she'll be burned out before she's 20, and I don't want to drudge for a wife. We'll worry about that when the time comes, and it hasn't. Now, meanwhile, you're both forgetting a truism. The more work you assume, the more work you can do. So relax. Oh, it isn't that, Mrs. Lane. It's that I haven't had much sleep lately. 
Those committees are killing me. Committees? Yeah. Patty sets it up and I carry out the work. I must have been up to 11 o'clock last night ringing doorbells. Was she ringing doorbells? No, uh, she's too busy. Busy doing what? Well, you know, uh, being the brains. That shouldn't take her too long. Where is everybody? <laughs> Hello? I'm home. Hey, look at all of you. Hello, <laughs> darling. Home is where the weeds are growing. Huh? Well, why don't you relax with us, Mr. Lane? Relax? <laughs> this has to be against the child labor law. Ask your sister. I think she volunteered to write the original law. So where is she? Search me. Is there a neighborhood volunteer fire department? She may have joined that. <laughs> uh, don't forget this. Well, now, just a minute. We should not be doing Patty's work for her. Can anybody around here say no? It's pretty hard to say no to her, Mr. Lane. You know how Patty is when she flies. She's marching along, conquering the world like Alexander the Great. And it's up to us peasants to execute for the great executor. Well, let's all remember an old truism. The more work you assume, the more work you can do. <laughs> Look, Natalie, do you think it's a good idea for me to bend over weeding like that? I mean, my, my sacroiliac might pop. Oh, I don't think it'll pop. Think positive. You know, can do. <laughs> Well, Patty's really doing a great job. We mustn't discourage her. I mean, we wouldn't want to break her spirit now that she's learning how to assume obligations. Would we? It's so exciting, this serving selflessly. Kids at school look at me differently. They look up to me. Mr. Brewster called me in this afternoon. He said, Patty, we at Brooklyn Heights High are proud of you. Your leadership has been an inspiration to your fellow students. I salute you. Wonderful, Patty. I'd salute you, too, if I had time. How are you coming with the books? Arthur left them in pretty bad shape, huh? That's putting it mildly. Brewster also said, Patty, you keep going at this rate and you can be the first woman president of the United States. I believe it. Especially if they change the voting procedure so you can just volunteer. President Patty Lane. Maybe I should make a Patricia. Patty's a little informal. Anything you say, Madam President. President Patricia Lane. PL tells the nation. P.L. calls a conference of the United Planets. P.L. saves the universe! You are the most modest president the colonies have ever had. I'll never change, Cap. I'll never forget you, my dear devoted cousin. I'll make you Secretary of the Treasury. Thank you, no. Secretary of Labor? That... that's a little more like it. And Richard? Richard. Dear devoted Richard. First Lady? <laughs> Kathy, I love you. You know something? I must love you, too. <laughs> you know, Kath, it's really nice having you studying down here with us. Thank you. It gets kind of lonely up in our room with Patty gone all the time. Mm. I hear when she runs out of local projects, she's gonna call a meeting on the moon. They'll elect her Miss Looney. <laughs> she's wonderful. I just thought I'd drop by on my way to another meeting. What are you here? You're president of the Musicians' Union. No. We just came from the Shake Shop, and there's a campaign to vote me Student of the Year tomorrow. Student of the Year? Hey, Natalie, did you hear that? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I did. It's like a regular ground surge. The kids think Patty's the most. Can do this, can do that. I don't think there's anything they think she can... Mr. Lane, are, aren't you feeling well? Oh, oh, sure. I stand up fine, see? <laughs> Congratulations, Patty. Thanks, Papa. Oh, 
You've opened up a whole rich new life for me. A life of milling masses, stumbling aimlessly, looking for a leader. Well, off to the cheerleaders' awards meeting. You're leaving so soon? I thought maybe you'd stay long enough to meet the family. Well, we who have so much to give must put aside our personal life and give. Wait. What do you know? Student of the year. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, I think I'll take a walk to the library. There's a book I need. Excuse me. What did I say? You had no reason to know, Martin, but being student of the year means the world to Kathy. And I feel, after all she's done for the school, she deserves it. I see what you mean. Well, do you think Patty will win? I don't. She's got a winning smile, but a losing face. As much as we love Patty, by comparison, she is sort of a flash in the pan. I'm sure they don't know that Kathy prepared a treasurer's report. The heck with that. Do they know I polished her silverware? I want to go to that meeting tomorrow. I'll expose it. All right, take it easy, Ross. This calls for cool heads. See, it'd be terrible if Kathy didn't get her just reward. What about mine? Like 50 cents an hour, retroactive. Time and a half for overtime. Old age benefits. Social security. Paid wash-up time. Just turn Patty's allowance over me. I'll deduct it from my bill. This is a great moment for us. We have been appointed to take charge of the Brooklyn Heights High Beautifying Project. When you say we... I mean all of us. Well, sure. I am chairman of the committee, but it's as I told the principal this morning. But I can't do it without all of you, the workers. What do we have to do exactly? Clean up the school grounds. Clean up the school grounds? Yes. Now, don't think of it as a civic duty. Think of it as a civic pleasure. Brooklyn Heights High is going to be the most beautiful school in the country. And I'm going to see to it that each and every one of you gets his own personal inspection kit. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I have another meeting. Patty, I don't know where you get the energy to do all this. You know something, Richard? Sometimes I surprise myself. Oh. Congratulations! We have been selected to make Christmas presents for the juvenile delinquents at Danville Reformatory. Who selected us? I did. <laughs> oh, come on, that's a big opportunity for us. Now, Mr. Roberts said we could use the school workshop. That means you can work Saturdays, Sundays, and evenings. Oh. Now, 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 now. Where is your school spirit? Hop to it! <laughs> Pardon me. Excuse me. Thank you. We have just been appointed to march with the Volunteer Fire Department of Brooklyn Heights in a Columbus Day Parade! Ugh. <laughs> I better give that one to Kathy. Come in. You busy, honey? I'm never too busy for you, Papa. What do you want done? Well, I don't want anything done. I just wanted to talk to you. Oh, then I am a little busy. As corresponding secretary for the Junior Junior League, yeah? Corresponding secretary? Yeah. Who's going to do the corresponding? Well, I'm going to take the notes, and then Kathy said she wouldn't mind writing a few letters and addressing them for me, and she types much faster than I do. Patty, you're marvelous. You know, sometimes I think of you as a beautiful, spirited, high-flying kite. Okay, I'm a kite, but I'm also a corresponding secretary. See ya. A way out kite, way up there on a thrilling ride. But you know, you're asking a lot of other people to keep you flying. You're serious, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'd like to reel you in just a little bit and see if your perspective doesn't change. Okay. Reel me in. The kids at school are all looking up to you these days. Why? Why do you think they're looking up to you, huh? Well, I'm not very good as a talking kite. 
I think it's because you've taken on a lot of jobs that they don't want to get involved in. You've become a problem broker. You've got a reputation, a wonderful reputation, as a doer. And that's good. The only thing is that um, a lot of people who love you have been doing the doing. Now, one of them sleeps right here in this room, and I'm afraid she's going to be crying herself to sleep tomorrow night. Kathy? Mm -hmm. Why would she be crying? Well, because she's been looking forward to being student of the year. She has? That's what she you told your mother. Seems that being picked as student of the year means as much to her as, uh... Being first woman president of the United States means to me. Oh. Well, I guess that election will have to wait a while, huh? Congratulations, Patty. Oh, thanks a lot. What for? I hear you're a cinch to be student of the year. Oh. All right, Patty. How's it feel to be student of the year? Richard, they haven't even voted yet. Oh, I keep my ear to the ground. You're a cinch. Uh, come on, they're starting the vote. We want to cast our ballots, don't we? Yes, we certainly do. Where's Kathy? Oh, she didn't feel too well this morning. She wasn't sure if she could make it to school or not. It's too bad. She should be here to see you elected. Yeah. Would you all be seated, please? Now, before we open our books, we're going to cast our votes for Student of the Year. Patty Lane! <laughs> May I say a few words, please? Uh, victory speeches usually take place after the election. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Patty. Well, I... I just wanted to tell you all what a thrill it is to have even been nominated for Student of the Year. Everyone's been calling me Can Do Patty. And that's right, I sure can. You bring me a problem, and I'll get it done. I didn't say I'd do it, I just said I'd get it solved. Because I have a cousin named Kathy. She's the one who's been getting things solved around here. Everything that's been done around here has been done by Kathy, with all of you helping her. I've just been a lot of wind. Oh, sure, it takes wind to make the windmill go round, but uh, it's the windmill that does the work. Good morning, Kathy. Oh, good morning, Mr. Murchison. Aren't you late for class? Well, they're having the voting for the student of the year. Oh, go on in. And I thought I'd, I'd wait until... Go there. on. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I think that that's the kind of person you want to vote for. Someone who's not afraid to tackle anything. Someone who's not afraid of a little work. Someone who gets the job done. I move that this class choose her by unanimous acclamation. Well, it is passed unanimously. Is there anything you'd like to say, Kathy? No, Miss McClintock. Except that uh, I believe the class has made a very wise choice. <laughs> what did I say? You just made your acceptance speech, Kathy. Your student of the year. Hi. Hi, Richard. I guess you heard the news. Yeah, Kathy told us. I wish you would have heard Patty. You sure would have been proud of her. I've always been proud of her, Richard. She just had that class in the palm of her hand. <laughs> I wish she'd occupy the palms of her hands with something a little more practical, like the dishes, for instance. There must be a thousand of them out there. Well, wouldn't your club women volunteer? Well, they aren't expected to. Well, where's Patty? We gotta make the scene at the Waterhole. We're having a meeting of the Shake It or Leave It Club. I wish I could join you. Actually, I haven't seen her for the last hour or so. Good heavens! What now? Here 
here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins And you'll find They laugh alike They walk alike At times they even talk alike 